What we are going to do today is I, I'm going to show you how to make compelling videos. So maybe you've never made a video of yourself. Maybe you've tried and you look terrible and you, you don't like it at all. Maybe you've been afraid to try. Well, I'm going to show you two ways that you can make great videos, even if you're shy and you don't really like the idea of being on video. So this is going to kind of go over the, the journey that I've been on with making videos. So when I made my very first video, I remember was, I was probably 23, 24 years old, something like that. And for somebody had gotten me for a birthday or for Christmas had gotten me one of those little cameras that kind of looks like a cell phone. This was back in the day before everybody already had a, a video camera built into their cell phones. Well, they had, you know, you, the video cameras used to be big and then they got smaller and smaller. And at a certain point, like they had video cameras that were the size of cell phones, but they were a separate unit, right? You didn't, the, the cell phone itself was not the video camera. It was the separate unit. And so I remember that I wanted to, I was doing kind of like some social experiments because when I was young, I was very socially awkward and had a, a hard time socializing. And I, I realized that, and I realized that that was a very bad thing for my life, that I did not want to have anything like that. I, I didn't want to live like that anymore because it was, it was ruining everything, right? It was ruining my social life. It was ruining my love life. It was ruining my opportunities at, at having a business, even getting a good job. You know, if you're socially awkward when it comes to a job interview, you're less likely to get the job. So it's like everything that you want is on the other side of being good at social skills. So this was something that was a, a big problem for me. And, and so one thing that I decided to do is once I got this video camera, and I, I got this idea from somewhere, like somebody had given the idea is, you know, you don't know what it is that you look like or how you come off until, because you, See, seeing it behind your own eyes is totally different than seeing it from somebody else's perspective. And so if you would like to see how you are from somebody else's perspective, then make a video of yourself. If you want to just talk about something, then make a video of yourself just talking about it. And that was very, very good advice. And I did it and I was not happy with the result. <laughs> Long story short. Right. So I talked about economics, which is what I was started studying in college. And I was very knowledgeable about it. And I was I liked it. I was enthusiastic about it. But when it came time to actually observe myself, well, record myself, for one thing, I was pretty uncomfortable with the idea of recording myself. It is a little bit weird to get used to talking to an inanimate object as though as you're, you're talking to a human being. And then. In addition, you're, you're, I realized that I was going to watch it back. Like I had that in the back of my mind. I'm going to watch this back and I'm going to be judging myself. So I was feeling, being feeling, I was feeling judged as I was recording this thing. And then I watched it back and, and sure enough, my posture was bad and I had like zero charisma. My, my voice was very flat. Like I had very little expression, very little emotion. I didn't feel like I had little expression, little emotion. But again, what you feel like inside yourself is very different than how you come out to other people. And so it's very good that I was able to do this. And then the way that my voice sounded was bad. I didn't like the way that my voice sounded. There, I was stumbling over things a lot. There was a lot that I didn't like about it. And so, that was kind of the beginning of, of me figuring this out. And so what I, I had always been comfortable with writing. Like I was, I was always a good writer and I was always very confident in my writing. And so when I started, I mean, there's a, a gap of quite a few years between me doing that first experiment and seeing how bad I looked on camera. And then years later, starting a YouTube channel and you can see my YouTube channel now, if you want, if you go back to like the oldest videos and see how bad I was at the beginning, well, what I had done, what I tried to do at the beginning was I would have an idea and I would outline the idea. I would kind of write out bullet points of what I was going to talk about in the video. And then I would 
flesh out the bullet points as I went. I would usually practice it in my mind before I gave the presentation or before I recorded the video. And then I would also, I do a lot of editing. So I would make a lot of mistakes. I would have a lot of blank space when I was just trying to think of what to say next. And with video editing, you can take out all that stuff, right? So I could sound fairly coherent, even though I really wasn't when I actually did the recording. And then the next step essentially was that I realized that I was much better at writing than I was at speaking because I was already confident in writing because writing, you're not on the spot. It's like, if I need to think about, if I need to spend 10 minutes to think about how to write exactly the perfect wording for this next sentence, then I can, I can't do that on a video. I have to do it right there. And if I don't get it spot on, then, well, I can do it over if I'm editing the video, but it's a lot less forgiving. It's a lot more pressure when you're doing a video than when you're writing. And so eventually I figured out that what I can do is I can make my video creation as writing heavy as I possibly could. So what I do is I would write out, I told you before that I would write out a outline of what I was going to say, and that was very helpful. And then I figured out that if I created PowerPoint slides, then that would help even more. And especially if I wrote out PowerPoint slides <clears throat> that had the exact words that I was going to say, because then all I have to do is read. And so I got more and more into, okay, I'm going to write out exactly what I'm going to say when I make this video. And then I'll be able to just read off of it and, and that'll be it. And I still do that to some extent. Um, and it depends on the application. And I'll talk about that in just a minute about how to do that. But the, basically I got pretty good at this very writing heavy. The problem with the writing heavy process, even though it was good and I kind of got good at reading the thing, like reading out the thing that I was writing in such a way that it sounded natural. It sounded like I was speaking naturally and I, it wasn't just me reading off of the script because if you sound like you're reading off of a script, then that it doesn't come off the same way, right? If you're, if you're reading off of a script, it seems scripted, it seems fake. It seems like those politicians that read everything off of a teleprompter and you can just tell that they're, they're not in it. I mean, even though to, to my own credit, I was writing the scripts myself. I wasn't like a politician where it's some shadowy guy in a suit in Washington somewhere that nobody's ever heard of is writing the script for me. No, I was actually writing the scripts myself, but still the fact that I'm reading off the script doesn't give the same level of authenticity, but it does have the advantage of, I can know, I can be very precise with exactly what it is that I'm going to say. And so I still do that sometimes, but then just recently, what I figured out is how to speak without using a script. And that's what I'm doing right now, by the way, I do not have a script. I came up with the idea. I, I decided on the idea for this video like 10 minutes ago. Literally, I didn't write out any outline. I didn't write out any bullet points. I didn't make a PowerPoint. I didn't make a script. I didn't do anything. It's just purely off the top of my head. And so what I figured out was, and I owe most of this to a guy named Owen Cook who teaches this very, very well. So if you're interested in learning about how to become a better speaker, I highly recommend taking his programs. But the biggest thing is just to get out of your head. That's the biggest thing that I found is that I choose a topic and then I just essentially, this is like a meditation for me. I'm not thinking. It's just the words are coming to my head. I'm totally relaxed. Normally, at least in the past, that's not how I would be at all. I would be very tense. I would be very self-judgmental. I would be thinking about, okay, I, I, you know, in the moment that I was saying something, I would be thinking about what it is that I have to say next because I didn't want to forget what to say next and embarrass myself. I didn't want to forget the important thing that I was supposed to include in there. And so, now I've got this, now that I've, I, I stumble sometimes, I just did it right there. I don't know if you caught it. I stumble sometimes, I get a little bit too in my head. It, it seems like when I talk about being in my head, that's when I seem to, I seem to stumble. 
But if I don't think, if I just kind of let the words come to me, strangely, that seems to work. And I believe, and it, this is this is getting a little esoteric as to why that is, but it seems like we have this connection to a higher self or to a higher source of information that is available all of the time. And in fact, if you listen to people that are very creative in whatever realm it may be, whether it's writing or music or inventing stuff or even science, like people who have and not science like establishment science where they just go study, they create an experiment and study the thing that the drug company funded them to study or like what that's kind of how most of science works. But the, the real innovators, the Albert Einstein's and the Nikola Tesla's and those kind of people, if you listen to their own words, they will often tell you that it was just like the idea came to me. And oftentimes they weren't even looking for it. It was just an idea came from outside and dropped into their head in some way. So there seems to be this source of information, this source of creativity that you can tap into. But the paradox of it is that you have to get out of your head in order to do it. The more you, the harder you think, the more you are blocking your ability to access this information. And that was always my problem for a long time. That was my problem with, with social skills and my problem with sales and my problem with a whole lot of things is I was just too in my head. I was self-conscious. I was thinking about things that are less important. I was thinking about how I look and how I present myself and how I sound and thinking about what I say next and worrying about forgetting and losing my train of thought and, and all this stuff. And so that what that does is it takes up the mental bandwidth and it crowds out the connection to whatever that higher source of information is. And it, if you want to hypothesize as to what that is, you're going to get into kind of more spiritual esoteric territory, which I'm not going to dive deep into here, but I do sometimes in my other, I have another YouTube channel that I get into that sometimes. But everybody, I believe, has access to this. Most of us just block it out. So we're, we're too busy thinking all the time. And so if you do a meditation practice, it's very helpful. If you have, and if you're not familiar with meditation, the, the basic concept is that you remove your mental chatter. You stop thinking of, you stop letting your mind wander to a whole bunch of different things. What you do is you keep your mind focused on one thing and generally it's one thing that's not particularly interesting. So you focus on your breath, breathe in, breathe out, or you focus on a sound like some repetitive sound that's going on. So you focus on the sound of the air conditioner or you focus on the sound of whatever's going on around you, just, or just keep your mind open and notice all of the sounds that are happening. And what you learn to do is just to quiet your mind. And when you learn to quiet your mind, that's when you can <clears throat> make room for these external sources of information to come in. And I believe we have these external sources of information that are, that are coming in all the time. And that's actually a lot of our mental chatter is not really us. It's not really our own mind. It's something outside that's influencing our own mind. And again, I'm getting a little esoteric here, and I don't really have time to explain why exactly I believe that to be the truth. Um, although I will give you an example, actually. I'll give you an example. Have you ever had a thought that come to your mind that you is shocking to you, that you completely disagree with, but it comes in your mind? for some reason. You don't believe that thing. You weren't thinking about that thing. You don't agree with that thing. And yet here it is in your mind. Well, where did that come from? Well, clearly it didn't come from you. If it was your choice, you wouldn't have done that. You wouldn't have, have thought that thought. So if you observe where your thoughts are coming from, you start to realize that actually a lot of them are not you. And so you can start to tune in to the sources of thought that are interesting to you or helpful to you. And, 
and politely decline the ones that are trying to get into your head and you're not interested in. So that is, that's really like the second way. And it's very convenient being able to do that because it means that you can create videos, you can create content, or you can even go and speak in front of a crowd with basically zero preparation. So I'm 16 minutes into this video right now. I had zero preparation. I didn't even think about what I was going to say except for choosing the topic. Literally, that was the only thing that I considered about what I was going to say here. So it's very time efficient. Whereas in the past, if I was going to do this and I had to go and plan out exactly every point that I was going to make and write an outline, then that takes time. That takes energy. Or if I was going to go and write out an entire script, that takes even more time and even more energy. And usually I would do it in two steps, right? So I'd create the outline first, and then I would create the, the script from the outline. And then if I was going to create a PowerPoint from that script, then that takes even more time. So it's very time consuming to do it that way. Although it does have its benefits and it does have its advantages. And the main one is precision. So I still do that sometimes if I, I want to have a video that I need to get every part exactly right. So I've given, I've kind of let go of this perfectionism of thinking that I have to get every part exactly right with just videos in general, but the, the big exception is ad videos. If you're following me, you probably know that I am a, I really like YouTube ads. That's my favorite way to get customers for just about anything. If you're following me, you probably are following me. Even if you don't remember, you're probably following me because you saw me on a YouTube ad and then you opted into something that may or may not have been related to helping you do YouTube ads. And I, I really like YouTube ads for a variety of reasons. But a YouTube ad is you only get a very short amount of time to make an impression. So if you think about the headspace that somebody's in when they watch a YouTube ad, well, they clicked on a video that is not your ad. They do not want to see your ad. They have no interest at all in your ad. They clicked on a video that they actually do want to see. And then your lovely face comes up and starts talking about something different than the thing that they actually wanted to hear about. So the only way to be successful in a YouTube ad is to be very precise in what you say so as that you hook their attention within the first five seconds. And then even if you hook their attention in the first five seconds, the person is still looking for an excuse to click the skip button. So the, the big, well, one of the big skills with YouTube ads is to get people to not skip, is to get people to actually want to hear what you have to say. And so the first five seconds of the ad is selling people on not skipping the ad. And then the next five seconds of the ad is selling people on not skipping the ad, right? It's, it's just, it's buying yourself another few seconds. And so you've got to have it interesting enough that people don't get bored and skip. So if people get bored for one second on a YouTube ad, they'll just skip the ad and you've lost them. You've lost the opportunity. So with the YouTube ad, you want to be very, very, very precise because if you screw up something even for one second, then that's going to lose you a lot of potential business. For that reason, I still, for YouTube ads, I script out everything exactly just the way that I used to. Now, this is significantly easier with a YouTube ad than it is with a long video because a YouTube ad is usually two to three minutes long, it, like maximum three minutes. So it's like one or two pages in a Microsoft Word document. And what I figured out how to do with that, that actually works pretty well and doesn't require a whole lot of effort is I script out my ad. And once I have a script that I like, I will put the ad into a, a Word document, and then I will make the Word document very small. It's like that size on the screen, 
and then I'll put it right to the side of the screen, like right over by the side of the screen. And then I will have my camera immediately beside where the script is. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll turn on the camera and then I will put my mouse cursor on the script. I will hold the mouse in my hand like this, and then I will scroll down. I'll scroll with the little, little ball down my script, and I will read it directly from the script. So I'm not even memorizing lines. I'm completely just reading from the script. Now, I've, I've had a little bit of practice at this, and now I'm pretty good at reading it in such a way as that it sounds natural. It doesn't sound like I'm reading from something. I, and part of learning to write well in a marketing context is, or this is one of the big secrets actually, is learning to write in a way that sounds conversational or that feels conversational rather. So even if somebody's reading it, even if they're not listening to you on a video, even if they're just reading it on a, in a text, it feels like you're talking to them in a personal way. So I do that and I record it and then I have a tool, a video editing tool called Descript, which is amazing. Actually, I'll give you a link to that real quick if you want to give it a try and you want to use my link and get me like a few dollars that I make as an affiliate, then what Descript will do is it, this is a it's a really cool software. It's like an AI based video editor. And one of the cool things that it can do is it can adjust your eye contact. So one of the problems with reading off of a script is because if you're looking at the script, you can't also be looking at the camera at the same time, which actually I have to remind myself of because I'm looking at myself on a screen and I'm not looking at the camera. Like my screen is down here. I'm, I'm getting confused. The screen's down here. The camera is right here. So I have to remind myself to look at the camera. But anyway, with the script, you if you're reading off of the script, then you're not making direct eye contact with the camera. Making the direct eye contact is good because then it feels like a personal conversation. So maybe you can even feel the difference. So here's me. I'm looking at my screen again. I'm not making direct eye contact with you. And then here I'm, I'm making direct eye contact with the camera. Can you feel the difference with that? Is that it just looks better. It comes off better. Right. So what Descript will do is that it will edit the video such that even if you're not looking directly in the camera, it will adjust your your video. It will adjust your eyes so that it, it makes it look like you're looking directly at the camera. So it makes it, it gives you that eye contact effect. So with that, I can make a video that is 100 percent scripted yet with perfect eye contact and it sounds fairly convincing in terms of being conversational. And I will also, I will start myself over again if I say anything in a way that doesn't come off as well as it could. Another part of it is that you want to say what you want to say, especially the first five seconds, you want to say it pretty fast. You want to get that hook in that is that first thing that gets a person's interest. You want to get it in within the first five minutes. So you may want to say it a little bit faster. If I say something and I'm, I talk too slow and it ends up taking seven seconds, then I'm like, no, I'm going to do that over. I want to do it faster. So with the, the first method with the script, another nice thing you can do is you can go back and edit. So if you don't say a land, land there, I go right there. Like if I was doing that in a, that's a perfect, Example, if I was doing that in a recorded video or not a recorded video, but an ad video, then I would go back and I would say that line again and I would correct it. And then I would just edit out the first line when I said it wrong and put in the second line. So that is basically like I just gave you all of my secrets to video record or to speaking on video, right? There's more to video recording, right? Like I can tell you about lighting and about what cameras to get, although I really don't focus on that very much. Really the message is by far the most important thing, but that is, that is how to, at least how I go about doing speaking on video. And so if you've been afraid to speak on video, 
or if you've if you've done it a little bit but not like the way that you sounded then give that a try try both of those different ways see which one works for you i recommend the the scripted way if you're doing ads and i recommend doing the zen hippie buddha way <laughs> for lack of a better term if you're doing longer form videos or even if you're doing shorter form videos but if you want to do like instagram reels because you can bang out a lot of content that way with very little preparation, very little work. If you hire somebody to do all your video editing for you, then it's like, that's the best, the best way that you can do it in terms of time efficiency. For me, for a long time, the, I, I always wanted to be a content creator. I wanted to put out a lot of content, but the main stumbling block was simply that it took too much time. So, now that I can, I have developed this ability and I, I developed it fast, by the way. I mean, I, I only had to hear about the uh, part of it is that I've been meditating for a long time. That probably helps if you're not if you don't meditate as a regular practice, I highly recommend it. It will help you in many more ways than just this. But it, once I learned the secret, once I heard from Owen Cook how to do this, then I pretty much got it immediately. I didn't really have to practice it at all. It's like, oh, it's like that eureka moment. Oh, I got it. That makes sense. Now I can do it. And right from the get go, then then I did it. Even though I've I've always been a little bit nervous about making videos, that helped a lot. So give that a try. If you want to run YouTube ads, that's something that like I've got I've I've made a lot of money. I've gotten a lot of leads. I made a lot of sales. My life has been changed dramatically because I learned the skill of YouTube ads. If you want to learn that, just let me know. Drop me a line in the email and I'll show you how to do that. So thanks guys for being here. Oh, and Danny says, teach us how you meditate. So yeah, I'll do that real quick. Actually, there's there's a million different ways of meditating and you can find people that are that are probably much better teachers at it than me. But the most simple thing is to set a timer, like grab your phone, put it on airplane mode so that nobody's gonna bother you, and then set a timer for five minutes. And then close your eyes, focus on your breath. Just notice, like you notice your belly going in and out, or notice the air going in and out of your nose. Pretty boring, but that's the point. You're quieting your mind. You're calming your mind. You're, you're letting your mind take a break without actually falling asleep. You're still totally awake, but you're letting your mind take a break. You're letting your mind open. And so you're only focusing on the breath. If a thought comes up, which it will often, then what you do is you notice, oh, I'm having a thought. I'm going to redirect my attention to the breath. You're training your focus. You're training your mind's ability to focus on one specific thing, which if you think about that for any time at all, you realize that that is an incredibly valuable skill for literally everything. So you keep your eyes closed, breathe in, breathe out, breathe slowly, relax, enjoy it. Like just, it's a relaxation exercise. If your mind wanders, then just bring it back to the breath and then keep doing that repeatedly and your mind will continue to wander. Part of the, the secret is that you don't get mad at yourself because your mind is wandering. That's normal. Just every time that it wanders, bring it back to the breath, bring it back to the breath. You'll do that over and over and over again and you get better at it over time. After five minutes, your alarm will ring and then you open your eyes and you're done. And then if you want to challenge yourself further, if you want to get better at it, then you increase the time, increase it to six minutes or seven minutes or however much you want, as long as you're getting a benefit from it. And yeah, that's it. Replace thoughts with focus on the breath. That's exactly it. Or you could choose something else to focus on. You could focus on the noise around you. You could focus on the, the weird shapes that you see behind your eyelids when you close your eyes. <laughs> but just choose one thing to focus on that's not particularly interesting. Start with the breath. That's 
usually the best place to start and then redirect your thoughts every time that they try to wander and that's it and then when you do that then you can start start to do things while you're in the same headspace so right now i'm making a presentation while i'm in the same headspace while i'm i have my my mind open and focused it's easiest when you're sitting down, when there's no distractions, when you close your eyes, that's the easiest time to do it. But once you get better at it, then you start to get better at doing it when there are distractions around. You can still focus even if there's construction noise going on, or even if you're talking, <laughs> even if you're doing something at the same time, that's, that's where you wanna get to. So thanks for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Go give it a try. Try, like, even if you never post a video, just make a video on your phone, two minutes long, try doing what I said and, and see how it goes. Even if it's terrible, like, you know, most people aren't good at anything on the first try, but if you actually put in some reps, if you practice the thing that you just learned, you're much more likely to retain it and you're much more likely to benefit from it than if you just listen to me talk about it and tomorrow you forgot. So that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.